How's it going? Hey guys. Hey, how are you? Welcome to Comic Con. The last day. Oh, right. Um, lots of pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime I see like the dramatic photos on people, I'm just like, no, nah, that's just not gonna be it. That weird Ally guy made an impression. Have you seen the Grant Gustin photos where it was like? Oh yeah. Pictures and he's just like. He should be, which is great. It's just 100%. Here, I'm just going to show this very quickly to everybody. This is robot chicken. Just saying. Shh, don't tell anybody. Keegan, with your, um, or the voice you do for American Ranger, are you inspired by any current... Um, maybe political, <laughs> misogynistic, racist, sexist type people out there in their organization? He, um, the, the, uh, the, uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'll say who no, you're voting actually, for, yes, though. Right. Yeah, I guess the only, should, yeah. the only difference is that American Ranger has an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, because you have to be in love with your character. Um, uh, uh, all of this stuff was taped before all of the really acute insanity started. Uh -huh. um, just the regular wholesale insanity that we thought it was before. Um, uh, but then, uh, so actually, it's funny, we, when we first started exploring the character in season one, it, he started from, I wanted him to have this kind of pure Boy scout outlook. And so we started in a kind of a Dudley Dumite place and pulled him down because, as we said, right, it, we were discovering that he's a little more, he is a war veteran, so he's gristled but still has this ideal world. Oh, remember, he is the kind of person who would want to make America great again. You know what I mean? So it, it's, I, I think in that, in that respect, it's, 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 almost, um, it's almost like we prognosticated it in some way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. If we could only go back and rewrite we Rewrite now. everything and so we could sh what shift a different the future once again. Yeah. 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 So, Kitty, what would you say would be the biggest difference between working in live action and doing like stop motion comedy work? The biggest, th the biggest difference is that I can, is that you can, you can always be over the top in stop motion. You can always be over the top in animation because the, you're trying to fit your energy to what's being seen on the screen, and it's always going to be something beyond. It's always going to be something super human, or beyond, beyond. We, we don't need nuance in this in, as much in this uh, medium. So I, that's the biggest thing is that you get to kind of ham it up, and um, you, you should really come into the situation thinking that way tonally. And the other thing that he does, I think, which is important, is like for live action, a raise of an eyebrow can make all the difference in the world. You don't get that opportunity, and I think that people don't realize an actor in that booth, they just have their voice that they have to make an impression, and some of the best actors in the world that will come in and do voiceover, they, they can't quite get that because they're used to those subtle movements, and, uh, and which works in live action. Animation is a whole different ballgame. It's all the yeah. interp. Yeah, it's getting it's getting all it's packing all the interp interpretation into a sentence every now and again. That's why we we'll, we'll do it over and over and over again. Or you'll it's almost sometimes I will say the meaning of the sentence and then say the sentence so that you're it's because it, it, you guys have got to you're seeing those characters those anima the the animated characters but you need to be hearing all of the all of the emotionality in the words. Yeah. Uh, Pete, you recently did the library. Yes. Uh, yeah, you, I did. Yes. Can you talk about that? I didn't get to go. Ahead. It was amazing. It was. Uh, we did a um, a live reading of Goodwill Hunting the other day, and uh, that was directed by John Krasinski, and um, and Matt and Ben came to play their roles, which was amazing. And uh, it was Matt and Ben and Emily Blunt played the mini driver role, and and uh, I got to play some various roles, and we just and and it was interesting because you know. The great, the late great Robin Williams is no longer with us, but uh, Margot Martindale <laughs> played <laughs> played the psychologist. It was just fantastic. And these are things I encourage people to go to. I've done this is my fourth one. I've done other three of them in L.A. And if you guys can ever see them, it's really great because it's a, a bit of a reimagining. And they'll do them here in New York, and you think, oh, why do I want to sit for two and a half hours and watch people sit at music stands and read? But it's the best part about it always is that you're gonna. It's the shooting script, and like any film, a film is never a finished product of a film is never what the shooting script is. So you're always you always end up reading scenes that didn't make it in the movie that are chilling or funny or touching or a direction the movie was going in that you didn't think was going to happen. Yeah. That to me, that's the best part. Yeah. So yeah, are, it was real. They're really a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. So Matt, like when when you and Zeb were coming up with Supermansion. 
when you made it, did Crackle come to you first, or are they who you like kind of went to with the project? <laughs> you know, it kind of has taken a weird path, this one, because it started at Adult Swim, uh, this, this thing. We shot the pilot, and um, as we did it, Mike Lazo, uh, actually his biggest comment and problem with it was it's too linear. And you know, it, ultimately he was worried that it was gonna get too deep into its own lore and he wanted it to be a little bit more non sequitur and we wanted to do a show that was gonna be, you know, we like the saga, we like these characters evolving and, yeah, yeah. and wanting to have the long lasting effects. So from it, we ended up uh, having a break there and Crackle has, and is, works, is at Sony and Brian Cranston, who's our executive producer as well, has a long-standing relationship with Sony, and Crackle was very, very uh, eager to uh, partner with us to be able to do it. So um, it just made for a very easy transition with them, and uh, we slid right to to them to, to do the show, and it's been wonderful. And yeah, it's great. you know, yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the relationship with uh, Adult Swim, you know, Lazo and I still talk about it, so um, <laughs> it's a fun thing to do. <laughs> Um, Christmas special is great. It's, it's a very simplistic story uh, in the sense that it really is about one character's wish uh, to have Santa become real. And, uh, and what happens if Santa Claus really had to understand what it's like to really be a Santa Claus, to have to get to a billion people's homes all in one night. And the, with that, what happens to a brain <laughs> in that capacity? And then realizing what power he may have and uh, watching the characters have to deal with uh, the beauty and uh, psychotic break of Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny, I didn't think of that way, that if you, if, if you wished that he would appear fully realized yeah. and had no sense of himself, yeah. <laughs> like, he what's going on. he's learning it as it goes, like yeah. that would be the most harrowing thing in the world. <laughs> I just you gotta do what concept. tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, it's very uncomfortable. So Gary plays Santa Claus, and uh, he's he's spectacular, absolutely. And now uh, Jim Parsons, I should shout out. Uh, the wish that is being made was to this other character that's kind of like a Mitzelplik kind of character, and uh, Jim Parsons plays that character and sings throughout this thing, and it's he's unbelievable. That man is unbelievable. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah. Talented fellow. Uh, Matt, so I wanted to ask you because Supermansion is all about deconstructing heroes, deconstructing lore, uh, and that's extremely popular these days, but sometimes creators, Zack Snyder maybe, uh, go a little bit too go a little bit We're not going to name names though. Go a little bit too far into the cynicism route and it turns into this joyless kind of misery. And I'm just kind of curious of how you're trying to uh, you know, hit the fine line of we still love superheroes, but we're still trying to point out what's great. Like, yeah, you know, I think I think that goes way back to our robot chicken days. Um, you know, we always say we like to make fun with the characters, not of the characters, and, and it stems back from all of us being comic geeks. Like, it's just finding the twist on it. We like to say we just take the characters and turn them 90 degrees on their side. They're still human. You still can care for these characters. You don't have to hate on them or turn them into these dark heroes and different versions of them. Just find the core of their personality and go on that adventure with the mon Take an absurd world and make it mundane. That's kind of the, the catchphrase that I use when I, I talk about this stuff. And um, yeah, for that, that's what we would like to do with all these archetypes, same type of thing. And then we found their personalities, which is different than, uh, you know, American Ranger may have started out as an archetype of Captain America, but he's a very different character than, I don't think the two of them would get along at all. <laughs> at all. So uh, yeah, it's fun to be able to do that. Do you have a relationship with uh, DC Comics based on the specials you've made? Have they you know, the funny thing is, uh, when I broke into the, this world, Jeff Johns and I wrote our first couple pilots together. He was my writing partner. Uh, he was in my wedding party. Uh, so, so, so when I saw him after he punched me in the face, no, um, no, it, it, it's like we don't have it. It's, 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 it's all love there. Uh, he laughs at it. We have a good time, and uh, that's, that's what's really nice about it. <laughs> Keaton, we talked to uh, Gary and Heidi about like, uh, how they're doing 
across. Yeah. So you have a big background in that. How much room do they give you in there? Have some of yours gotten in? What are some of your favorites? That they, uh, they they give us all the room. Okay. First of all, all the room. It's 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 a, a wholly collaborative process. The the one of the favorite things is that we is is these vocal signatures that you develop that appear sometime in the middle of the second or third episode because it's not a waste of time in a manner of speaking to screw around a little bit and for your soul your soul your soul job in a moment is to try to make people laugh like I'm trying to ruin a take on purpose <laughs> but sometimes if that happens you do get a piece of gold from that. so one thing that's interesting is there's this thing that that American Ranger does, which is he, 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 he it's, the, it's the manner in which he laughs. So you know, he always goes, ha, 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 ha! <laughs> and, and I'm just trying to make Zeb have a joyful day. That's all I really want is for Zeb and Matt to have a fun time. But then now that's, that vocal signature has found itself into the, into the, uh, the, kind of the viscera of the we character. We have a whole file of just that laugh that we end up being like, we want that one for this one. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and, and, and for Agony, he is now a little more sinister. And even though I mentioned not being nuanced, he's a little more sinister and a little more nuanced than he was in the beginning. In the beginning, it is just, we're, we're this, this trope where we're lampooning Samuel L. Jackson characters, you know what I mean? But remember, he was screaming yeah, all, all the, the time. time. Yep. And now we've got more of this, well, well, well. <laughs> feeling about him and, and, and that's what's so fun about doing the show and yeah. so attractive about doing the show is watching them evolve and having and having the stories evolve while we're doing them. The agony stumbling to try to find a word like where he'll just run it always it, like it'll get me in the booth every time it's just like this little like I don't even know how you would do it but it just comes <laughs> out and it's every time Zeb and I are like we're gonna use this, mark that one. Like he doesn't even see it. And we're just like marking little notes to ourselves. You're marking little notes over there. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, it's, it's great. And I like, just found out today that you were rewriting episodes as I'm improvising yeah. in the book. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're yeah. sitting there and we're making little things back and forth and pass little notes. <laughs> so I'm the one responsible for making me come back we second give you or third and fourth <laughs> times. Right? Yeah. We, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All those pickups, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say anything, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that it's bad and we need it. It's like, oh, we wrote something. Um, anyway, next question. <laughs> I just had a quick question for Steven. I wanted to ask you because uh, Key and Peele recently ended and you were both in Storks together and now you're going your separate paths, you're doing Superman, and he just came out with that trailer for Get Out. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, that Peele did. Peele came out. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just kind of curious if you find that Hollywood is still trying to pressure you back together, if they're still... Well, we're together. We are together. Yeah. And, and, and we'll never not be together. It's just it's just taking little hiatuses um, to do things that we want to do. We enjoy working together so much, and, and there's a comfort level there that, that we want to maintain. Um, uh, yes, there is a little bit of pressure that that uh, it's less now than it certain was even six months ago. Oh, wow. mm. Yeah, um, it's the, 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 this kind of these two entities existing uh, apart from each other um, is starting to happen slowly but surely. Like you, you don't think. I don't always say Bob and Dave. I say Bob Odenkirk and David Cross. But for me, they're my heroes. I mean, uh, Mr. Show is one of the greatest things that's ever happened in my life. Uh, being able to watch it. But so it, it's happening, but not as much as it was before. But there are there are times where it's like, well, we'd love if Key and Peele would do that. And now again, now in days, what happens? We go, well, ask them if they just want him to do it, or ask them if they just want him. And I think the answers become it's more frequently yes now. 